Hello everybody, it's Jonathan Senor Smoke from the Ring of Fire in Westchester County. I bid you welcome hanging here at Casa Smoke in the side yard. And uh, I am rolling smoke behind me right now, my Timberline 850. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm here to report about a cook that I uh, had last weekend, actually two weekends ago, where he completely bombed out and destroyed a full pack of brisket. And um, it's really important for me to report to you upon the disasters that I encounter because I actually think that they are better um, uh, examples to learn from than the triumphs. So anybody who will tell you that cooking brisket is the most difficult thing to do in barbecue, it's the apex, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, I guess there is some truth to that. Um, however, the week after that, I completely aced one, but that's a whole other video that'll be forthcoming. Um, the brisket cook that I had was one of the worst that I've ever I've ever done. There was a there were certain factors. Part of it was pilot error, no doubt about that. There were also some mechanical issues I was dealing with, um, and uh, it was basically a uh, at the, the 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 greater sum of things is that it was a cluster blank. And um, I want you to learn from this. So, you know, typically I don't make notes. I kind of improvise these videos. I did jot some things down to review with you really quickly. If you really want to get granular um, with this, uh, there's a blog post uh, where I get in more details so you can read it at your leisure. This video is just kind of kind of be like a 20,000 feet above um, overhead view. Um, but let me just grab my... Uh, my legal pad over here and essentially there were five major issues which made me turn this uh, piece full pack of brisket uh, prime full pack of brisket into Appalachian coal. Now if you do like to consume coal this is probably a how-to video but um, for the most uh, for the most part I'm assuming all of you don't want your uh, your brisket tasting like it came out of your fireplace so um, let's just use this as an example of what not to do. So um, the essential issue with this was uh, I put the brisket on. It was a full pack of brisket, okay? It was uh, 15 pounds. And uh, quite honest, no, I'm sorry. It was 15 pounds, but trimmed down to about 12. The first issue, right off the bat, we trimmed too much fat off of it. I think that uh, you can read online, the experts would tell you that a half an inch, three quarters of an inch of fat cap should be left on. I think the butcher got a little too aggressive and went even lower than that. So right off the bat, there wasn't enough fat on there to do it the right way. Um, when I put it into the Timberline, we went fat cap down this time, which is really runs contrary to the way that I normally do things. Um, I just figured by going fat cap down, what I was going to be doing was creating more of a barrier between the heating elements and the actual meat. Um, of course, the true tried and true Texan way of doing this is fat cap up, which is the way that I roll from now on. But um, what happened was, I put the brisket on at 10 o'clock at night, and my thought was to let it cook for 12 hours at about 225 degrees, and then the next morning I was going to do my switch, wrap, rest, all good to go. The, the first problem was I got up at about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I came outside, and I saw this um, ugly message on the Timberline that said temp error, and that would be the equivalent of being in front of your computer and seeing the blue screen of death. <clears throat> I have never seen this message before. And the first thing I did was I lifted open the hatch, and um, it was cool inside. It was, um, uh, I mean, the brisket had definitely turned color, okay? So um, it had been cooking for a while, but uh, what I did was I opened up the, um, the hopper, and the pellets, which had at least gone halfway down, almost looked like a whirlpool, okay? The pellets were ringing the hopper, but there was nothing in the middle. So what happened was at some point the pellets stopped feeding. So what could have caused that? Um, this is the first time that I've done a long cook and I have not used Traeger pellets. Um, I used Lumberjacks, which we're selling now in Ring of Fire. And I'm not gonna blame it on the pellet, okay? But it was raining that night. Uh, there was a lot of moisture in the air. I don't know if the pellets just got stickier and just stopped feeding in. 
Um, I, I, I just I don't have an answer for it because it just had happened overnight. Uh, I think that the way to get around this moving forward is, and, and, which is a practice that I use usually do if it's during the daytime, is I always stick my hand in every so often and kind of mix the pellets up and keep them moving. But so that was that was the uh, that was the first catastrophic situation because now I'm flying a plane uh, without radar. I have no idea how long the brisket actually cooked for. I don't know if the thing shut down two hours prior, four hours prior. So I kind of fudged it from there. Um, the other issue that I noticed was um, uh, when the brisket actually got overcooked was that I had set it on the lowest level of the racks and I did not have a water pan in there. So basically the brisket, if you are familiar with the Timberline, the Timberline, it has four different um, rack settings, one of which is, it's like below the first level, it's almost really used for searing. Um, we were on the lowest level, it was just the brisket on the rack, and again, no water pan inside. So I think that what we saw was a lack of a humid environment, okay, which probably again led to dryness and things overcooking. Remember, obviously the lower you're going to be on the rack, the more you're going to feel the heat. And uh, I think that definitely led to an issue as well. And then of course, no liquid. I always, whether I'm doing a prime rib, um, uh, any of my long smokes, I put a water or beer pan in there. I just didn't do it this time. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. But um, that was a problem as well. Now, in terms of wrapping, um, I finally took the thing off at about, I noticed the error at six. I turned it back on, came home at about 11. Now we're, you know, we're cooking for, normally would have been 12 hours, but again, we don't know how long the Timberline was off for. Brisket looked pretty good. It was about 160, 170 degrees. So at that point I wrapped it, but here's the other problem. I wrapped it in foil. I have not wrapped in foil in so long. I'm, using, I'm always using butcher paper. I wrapped it in foil and by doing so, it, it, it just kept on cooking. And uh, which once again led to the, um, uh, uh, my, my, my overarching issue. And um, basically I want to say at about two o'clock in the afternoon, I pulled her off in the foil, put her in the cooler, foil was wrapped tight, and then we opened it up later, there was about two hours of a rest, and as you can see from the pictures, it's dark. It's a little too dark. And uh, what happened was I was able to salvage about 30%. So the 30% of the brisket that was safe tasted great, it was moist, it fucking it rocked. The rest of it, <laughs> like I said, I could have used it as, you know, basically as charcoal, it was so dry. And, um, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a lesson to be learned. And again, there'll be another video coming up where I got right back in the saddle the following weekend and did another full packer and completely aced it. And that's, that's something you're going to really want to watch that video and read that blog post. So to encapsulate the issues, once again, number one, too much fat was removed from the brisket. Number two, things went off the rails while I was sleeping. Um, how do we get around that? Make sure your hopper is full of dry pellets, I guess. Um, number three, brisket was put too low in the chamber, all right? It needs to be on the timber line. To me, it has to be on the middle level. So that means on your first level, you can put your water, your beer pans, all right? Um, that's basically it. Um, I wasted a hundred something dollars of, uh, I know you people in the South are probably laughing that I pay that for a full pack of brisket, but we live in New York. What do you want? But learn from my mistakes, learn from my errors, please. I'm here, I'm here to serve. I'm here to benefit you guys. And, uh, brisket can be an ornery SOB, but like I said, wait till you see the next video and blog post because your man here crushed it. Learn from this cook. People keep smoking. Thank you. And for Traeger Timberline, both the 1300 and the 850, come visit the Ring of Fire. We're always doing deals. Thank you.